Welcome back to Heaven's Gate, I'm Emmanuel, and today I want to share an experience with you that even shocked me as I was hearing it. Stay with me until the end, as it contains a valuable lesson everyone should know. Before we begin, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments where you're listening from. It's always inspiring to see how far our words can reach. Thank you to those who do. My name is Marcus, and I am 35 years old. I've been a boxer all my life, ever since I was a child. It was a passion my father had passed down to me, a legacy that seemed to flow in my blood. He often told me about his youthful exploits in the ring, the battles he won, and those he lost with honor. So, from a young age, I began to love boxing. My mother disagreed. She said it was too harsh a sport, that it would change me. Yet, as I grew older, that passion became mine as well and gradually the ring became my world, my life. As the years went by and I grew stronger both physically and mentally, I acquired all the classic characteristics of a boxer, including in my personality. I felt invincible, arrogant, always ready to impose myself, irritable with anyone who tried to challenge me. I thought I was always right about everything, and I didn't believe anything I couldn't see or touch firsthand. In my mind, I was a sort of god on earth, a titan with steel muscles and few fears. It was me against the world, and the world had to follow my rules. I feared few things, and no one dared to make me feel inferior or question my strength. But one day, everything changed. It was 2019. I was having a match that, on paper, didn't seem special. One of those rather quick bouts to win without too much trouble. I felt confident, almost overly confident in myself. Stepping into the ring, I was convinced I already had the victory in my pocket. But what happened that night marked a turning point in my life, one of those experiences that shake you to the core of your soul. Towards the end of the second round, while I was managing the situation without particular difficulty, my opponent hit me with a forbidden blow, a strong, direct punch below the belt. The pain was immediate, sharp, a stab that bent me in two. The ring suddenly felt tight, the crowd's voices faded into the background, and my attention was entirely on that paralyzing pain. I bent down, trying to catch my breath and understand what had happened, but I didn't even have time to react. In that very moment, my opponent took advantage. A devastating punch, directed at the nape of my neck, hit me with a force I had never felt before. The world around me suddenly disappeared. First, there was just a sudden flash. Then everything went dark. A deep, total darkness enveloped me in an instant, as if I had been swallowed by an abyss. I was told that I was taken to the hospital immediately, with an ambulance racing with sirens blaring into the night. I was unconscious, immersed in that total darkness. My eyes no longer responded to signals, as if they had dimmed along with me. I vaguely remember confused voices, fragments of distant sounds, but everything is blurred. The doctors told my parents that the situation was serious, very serious. They said we had to wait, that they didn't know in what condition I would wake up, or if I would wake up at all. Every minute, every hour would be crucial. Everything depended on how I would react, whether my body could return whole, or if I would be left with motor damage or other problems. But while they were going through all this, I was experiencing something that would forever change my life. After my eyes closed, an oppressive darkness enveloped me. Suddenly, it felt like I was suspended in an empty, silent space where time didn't exist. At first, there was a strange calm almost numbness. But soon the darkness began to change. The air became freezing, as if the cold came from deep within my own soul. Around me, indistinct shadows appeared and disappeared, similar to barely visible faces floating at the edges of my vision. Then I began to distinguish figures approaching. They were familiar faces, icons from a past life, famous characters who seemed to have lost themselves in this gloomy place. At first I saw them motionless, like statues. 
but slowly they moved closer with cold stares and mocking smiles. Their eyes were empty, as if emptied of suffering. When one of them spoke, the voice was broken, like a whisper combined with a growl, and the tone was full of bitterness. So you too, finally, he said. I felt every word digging something inside me, exposing every fear, every mistake, and guilt like a painful reflection. I tried to retreat, but it felt like being trapped in a sticky black web, a prison without walls from which there was no escape. Each figure highlighted a failure of mine, a fall, and the tone became increasingly threatening, as if they fed on my terror. When it seemed that all warmth had vanished, I realized where I was, an immense expanse of tormented shadows, a place that seemed to reflect every nightmare never lived. And as the cold penetrated deeper into my heart, I understood that my soul had been sucked into something terrifying, something that sought to show me a buried and perhaps inexorable truth. Suddenly, a long, dark corridor appeared before me, and I felt myself being pushed toward its end, where something I needed to see seemed to reside. With each step, a dark and restless energy enveloped me, as if the floor itself emitted a mournful murmur. At the end of the corridor, a large, dark opening seemed to pulse with a strange energy, as if it were alive. Through the entrance, I found myself in a vast cavern that seemed infinite, dominated by an immense rocky wall similar to a broken mountain. It was a dark and mysterious place, and its slopes were covered with figures burdened by thick chains, motionless like statues. Climbing that path cost me every fragment of energy. It was as if each step consumed a piece of my soul, emptying me of everything except fear. In that timeless torment, my gaze settled on a figure I never thought I would see. A woman with refined features, but a desperate look, sitting on a solitary peak surrounded by emptiness. She was very similar to someone the world had loved and admired. She was an iconic figure. Then she approached, and I recognized him. It was Muhammad Ali. He appeared as a faded shadow of the legend he once was. The proud man, the unwavering icon, the champion with sharp words and fast punches, now seemed enveloped in a veil of silent suffering. In his once bright eyes of confidence and fervor, there was now a dark depth, an abyss of fatigue and loneliness, as if he were imprisoned in eternal torment. Ali, who had always declared himself the greatest, seemed to carry a weight that even he, with all his strength, could no longer bear. I approached him, and for a moment our gazes met. His eyes fixed on me with an intensity I will never forget. There was something broken, an infinite sadness that words could never describe. He whispered something to me, his voice trembling, scratched by ancient pain, a pain that had settled deep within his being. In this place, he said, everything becomes clear, clearer than I would have wanted. I stayed there, listening to his words, trying to understand the torment of that man whom the world had adored and feared. Ali continued, almost as if he were revealing a story he had kept inside for too many years. It's easy to understand why I'm here, he murmured with a resignation that seemed carved into his soul. If only someone truly knew how I lived. Behind all that strength and confidence, behind the crowd that exalted me, there was a man who was losing everything that really mattered. He took a long pause, his eyes filling with an even darker shadow. As a boy, I believed in simple things. God, justice, family. I thought fighting in the ring was a way to prove who I was and to defend those who had no voice. My people, those who suffered without anyone listening to them. I felt like a hero, a warrior of justice. But then the world led me to chase something different. I began to fight not for justice anymore, but for glory. For that flame that extinguishes a moment after it's been lit. 
Ali shook his head, as if trying to dispel those thoughts. But it was clear that the weight of his life and choices was still there, looming. The ring gave me the world at my feet, he continued, his voice becoming almost a whisper. But it also drained my soul. I began to crave adulation, constant attention, as if every applause could fill that void inside me. But it was just a mirage. I lived seeking greatness. But now I wonder what I really gained. His eyes filled with tears that never fell, tears held back by a strength that, even in that eternal torment, continued to reside within him. Here, in this place, there is no rest. There are no more lights, no spotlights, no warmth from the crowd. Only eternal silence, an echo of my mistakes and choices. There is no one to applaud. No one to tell you that you are great. They're only my regrets, sharp and alive like blades. I thought I could be a symbol, but I realize I lost sight of the truth chasing something empty. Everything I thought was important. Now it's vanished. My title. My fame. None of this makes sense here. Allie turned, as if looking for an exit. But in that place, there were no escape routes. I got lost, he confessed, his face marked by a deep shadow. I thought greatness was there, in the titles, in the crowd's cheers. But now I see it was all an illusion. Every time I was in the ring, every time I looked at that screaming audience, I felt invincible, as if I were immortal. But that kind of immortality, it's false. I had the illusion that being the best... Being the most loved was enough to be happy, and now, nothing of that dream remains. He took another pause. This time his voice was calmer, resigned. In this place, the soul finds no peace. There is no day or night, no moment of respite. It's as if I were suspended in still time, where every wrong choice comes back to my mind. More painful than before. I lived to please others, to be recognized, and I forgot to find myself. My faith, it was everything to me when I was young, but I lost it along the way, blinded by what the world said I was. Ali's eyes, once vivid, were now full of heavy sadness. Here, I am naked in front of my mistakes, he said, as if confessing to himself. There is no one to please, no one to impress. It's just me, and the weight of everything I chose to be. I thought I could fill the void inside me with glory and adulation, but now I realize it was just a dream. Now I am here, a prisoner of those choices, with nothing else to offer myself. My own reflection judges me, and there is no way out. At that moment, Ali no longer seemed a legend, but a broken soul, a prisoner of his mistakes and illusions. He sighed, and in that sigh was all the weariness of a soul that had fought, won, lost, and ultimately found only eternal torment. Continuing along the dark path, I felt the weight of the darkness around me increase. The temperature dropped and the feeling of remorse and despair became more intense, as if I were in a valley of deep regrets. A new figure appeared before me, with a face marked by a melancholic shadow. It was Whitney Houston. Her presence was permeated by a sadness so profound, it seemed almost tangible, as if the echo of her voice still vibrated in that desolate place. Whitney stared at me with a fragile expression her eyes still bright, but burdened by pain. People knew me for my voice, for my strength on stage. She began, her voice a whisper full of regret, but inside me was a silent battle, a pain I couldn't smother. I tried to fill that void with fame, with applause, but nothing was enough. I was sucked in by my own demons and the people who fed on my fragility. Here I am, forced to feel every echo of that fame as an endless void. 
My own successes seem to laugh at me now, leaving me with a sense of loneliness that not even my voice can fill. As I watched her, it was as if her successes, her glory, and her pain were intertwined in eternal torment. Whitney was trapped between the desire to be loved and the destructive spiral she had fallen into. She was a tragic reflection of a talent devoured by fame, destined to relive her own regrets. Shortly after, I heard an unusual noise, a rhythmic sound that seemed like distant but slow and unsettling drums. Another figure appeared before me, tall and wrapped in an aura of mystery and melancholy. It was Michael Jackson. His face was marked by torment that seemed endless. He looked at me with eyes full of sadness, his face wearing a mask of difficult-to-interpret emotions. I was worried by millions, he said, his voice a nearly broken whisper. But I lived a life of solitude. All I wanted was to reclaim my innocence, to feel free from all that weight. I tried to reinvent myself to escape my own image, but in the end, I remained a prisoner of the world's PR that adored me. He paused, his eyes distant, then continued. Here I cannot escape the reality of who I was. My soul is trapped in an infinite cycle, permeated by the expectations and judgments I endured and sometimes encouraged. I am forced to relive every step, every attempt to escape myself, knowing there is no way out. Michael Jackson seemed a soul teetering between light and shadow, a man divided between his public image and his private vulnerability, destined to be swallowed by the void he had sought to fill in life. Further ahead, in the shadows, a silent figure watched me with a deep and intense gaze. It was Chadwick Boseman. His face was calm, but marked by profound awareness. Unlike the others, Chadwick seemed immersed in a quiet melancholy, as if he understood the weight of the place he was in but faced it with dignity. I tried to make sense of my life, to leave something good behind, he said, his voice calm but vibrating with emotion. I strive to be an example to inspire those who look up to me, but I also knew the shadow of pride and vanity. Sometimes I place too much value on my image, on others' expectations, trying to be perfect. In life, I dedicated myself to a cause, to hoping for the future, but I neglected to confront some inner demons. He paused, his gaze still fixed on the void. Now I feel the weight of every moment I allowed my image to prevail over the person. Every time I wore a mask to hide my vulnerability, my regret is not having lived fully, always driven by the urgency to leave a legacy. But even here I understand that the true legacy does not lie in what we leave behind, but in who we truly are. And in this sense, I fear I have lost something fundamental. Chadwick seemed to carry a more subdued torment, an inner reflection that kept him tied to that place. He was a soul aware of his own fragility and the weight of fame, destined to reflect for eternity on the choices he had made. After experiencing this journey through darkness, I feel I have something to say that cannot remain silent. Every face I met, every story whispered to me has become a piece of my own soul, a reflection of what could happen to each of us if we are not careful with the path we choose. Whitney showed me how we can become prisoners of what we desperately seek in others. Michael reminded me that fleeing from ourselves takes us further away from peace. And Chadwick taught me that no matter how much we aspire to be heroes for the world, we are vulnerable and sometimes fragile inside. All of them lived grand and intense lives, but each lost their way in one way or another. In solitude, in the need for approval, in sacrificing themselves. In the end, I believe the true trap is not suffering or weakness, but never having the strength to face them. From every soul I met, I understood that our fears and desires can become chains if we are not willing to recognize them and work to break them. And I realized that to truly save ourselves, we must be ready to endure what we fear to look inside ourselves. Redemption is not just about forgiving or being forgiven, but understanding and accepting our vulnerabilities, 
because that is where true strength lies. I understood that perhaps this journey was granted to me for a specific reason. Not to punish me, nor to make me suffer, but to give me a new chance. It was as if destiny had put me to the test, making me descend into the darkest corners of my soul, to force me to see my life with finally open eyes. It was like someone had told me, look at what you have been, what you have done, and now choose. Do you want to continue like this, or do you really want to change? Every choice I had made, every action, every thoughtless word, every punch I had inflicted with arrogance and without thinking, all had a weight I carried with me. And I saw in that journey how unaddressed regrets can become invisible prisons that bind us even beyond this life. I retraced the years spent in the ring, that old life where my only goal was to win, to be stronger, more feared. But I also saw what I had missed, the people I had turned my back on, the bonds I had neglected, believing that nothing could truly touch me. Now, as I return to life, I feel a deep need to do something different. To live in a way that what I leave behind are not just victories, but acts of kindness, understanding, and forgiveness. I feel the need to approach those I have hurt to apologize, to make peace with those parts of me I have always avoided, hidden behind the facade of the invincible boxer. I realize that I have the responsibility to walk with sincerity and humility, and that every day can be an opportunity to change, to truly start over. This experience has taught me that no matter how much we can fall, no matter how lost we may feel, there is always the possibility of redemption if we are willing to seek it. It is clear to me now that our mistakes do not have to define us forever, and that the way back is always there, ready to show us the path if we have the courage to follow it. To anyone listening to this story, I want to say one thing. Do not be afraid to look inside yourselves, even if what you see scares you. Do not let regrets dominate your lives. Never postpone love, forgiveness, or understanding. Be grateful for every breath, for every moment of peace, for every laugh and hug. Be kind to yourself and to those around you, because in the end, it is the acts of love, not victories, that truly save our souls. And it is with this new awareness that I return to my life with the humble hope that my journey can help others. A reminder that redemption is always possible. Love, forgiveness, and hope are thin, but indestructible threads that can guide us even in the darkest moments. Thank you for listening to my story. May these words bring a bit of peace and remind anyone who needs it that every soul can find the light, even in its darkest depths.